And with all those clues, now we know the true identity behind this nice yet weird looking harbinger. I don't know why I keep doing this, but anyway, what is up lovely people? It's imperfect again. After Genshin 4.2 release, we got a massive lore related quest in game. And I really mean it. Like we finally know the meaning behind this Fontes art, Masquerade of the Guilty. We know how Farina got her vision even though she was a god. They finally mentioned Natlan in game after way back then we only heard about Natlan famous for the hot spring. And we also got to meet the queen again. I'm the queen. But that is not what we're gonna talk about today. It's about a character that people rarely talk about in version 4, yet. But I personally believe we will see her at a point in Fontaine arc. It's none but Gujong. Hard to be more exact, the character that people say gonna be Gujong's reincarnation or copy, Sandrone. But before we jump straight into the real discussion, friendly reminder, this video will contain some spoiler from the latest word or item quest, so please watch it at your own risk. So amongst the 11 factory harbingers, Sandrone is one of the characters that haven't got her spotlight yet. We didn't really have a clear information about her, and I bet some of us even confused which one of this character is the true harbingers. This lady sitting over here or this big robot behind her. But what we do know, that she is the seventh seat of the harbingers, as Wanderer said on his voice line. And one more thing that's kinda clear that her costume have fountain like vibes on it. And also, what's different about her than the rest of the Harbinger is how she sounds less talkative compared to her other teammates. <laughs> Utterly risible. In Winter Night Lazo teaser, while all the Harbingers are giving to each other, she only said that one short sentence. I wonder why. Well, all of that seems pretty normal and she might be just another character from somewhere. Until 4.2 is released, where we got a new information, which lead us to another speculation that Sandrone is none but Mary Ann. But how could this blue haired lady is Sandrone? Um, let me start from the beginning. In 4.0 word quest, The Ancient Colors, we met Jacob, an NPC that also Mary Ann's childhood friend. We saw him in his iniquitous Baptist form, and said this to say more, which indicates that Mary Ann is no longer alive, which might be due to the explosion in Alinez's remains. And in the word quest Anne of the Narcissus and Cruz, we met this blue haired lady, which also named Mary Ann. It's kinda weird because she looks more like a Hydro Eidolon instead of a real person. Then, in the word quest in the search of the LGC, we learn that this blue haired lady is a merged consciousness of Mary Ann and Lyris, an oceanid who served as the director of the Narcissus and Cruz Institute around 500 years ago. Then, why you said Mary Ann is Sandra when she already dead? They didn't even look like. Well, before you throw random shit at me, let me show you this. This image itself already gave us a strong hint that this Sandrone might be Mary Ann. Her appearance with Sandrone is like two peas in a pod. But this might be not enough as a proof since back then we also said Guizhong is Sandrone or even Lumin is also Sandrone. I don't even know how. But even though we got this photo, something still feels off. If Mary Ann is dead, how could she become Sandrone that exists in this current timeline? while Mary Ann's story is hundreds of years old. This might be related to one person, Elaine, which is Mary Ann's brother. As an orphan, the only thing Elaine cherishes the most was his younger sister. But sadly, the greatest tragedy befalls these two siblings. If you take a look into this artifact set, or to be more specific, the masterpiece overture lore, it's kind of implied in his old age, which is after losing his precious sister, Elaine shut himself up in his laboratory and immersed himself in the research of something before his death. Yet the only thing that could be found in his personal workshop were only signs that something has been built. What might it be? Well, before we jump into that conclusion, if you take a look at another artifact set, which is the Nymph's Dream set, we can see the description of the Narcissus and Cruz Institute member. 
This one might be talking about the blue-haired Marianne, as it fits the story of how she cherishes the flowers in her garden. And this one might be talking about Alain, who is trying to create something more than just a working machine. It sounds weird, but plausible at the same time, since Alain is the only one in the institute that's familiar with this mecha stuff. And he also the genius who invented the energy block, which are the Numa and Osea energy based on the guides in game. On top of that, he is the only person who can make prototype machine that capable of speech, which is Seymour. Well, this might be rich, but what if before his death, Alain managed to create one of a kind mecha that capable of perfect speech, which is far better than Seymour. If that's really the case, this might prove that this syndrome is the first mecha that able to talk just like a real person. It will also explain why she looks almost exactly the same as Mary Ann from her childhood, why she exists in the present time, and why she still exists in the first place even though it's said that she already died long ago. Well, you might wondering, if she's just a robot, how could she create Catherine? Which is another robot that has an ability to speak perfect human language. Since seems like Marianne didn't have a massive knowledge about Mecha like his brother, and Alain himself is already dead. Well, there might be two possibilities. One, Alain might have put all of his knowledge into Sandrone so she could do what he can. Two, this big rune greater behind Sandrone is none but Alain himself. Ooh, interesting, right? But how? I forgot where I saw this in the first place, but from the wiki, it said that Alain's primary research focused on Kainrua's machine, such as Rune's Grader, which is the bigger version of the Rune Guard. But even so, it didn't explain how Alain could be this robot that holding Sandro. Well, I agree. But if you look at the enigmatic page 12, it says with the right organ, consciousness can be transplanted. So what if after all the time he spent on the research, Alain managed to transplant his consciousness into Sandro's mecha. Hmm, it would be interesting. Well, it could just be a coincidence that Sandro's robot looks like a ruined grader. But do you think there's any coincidence in Genshin Impact? And to add more spices to the table, if you check Child's voice line about Sandro, it says that she always seems engrossed in her research. Child said he only met her for a few times, but she looks at him as if she wants to kill him even though he has no memory of it. Well, if you realize, the Narcissan Cruz Ordo was established by people that learned about the coming destruction of the world and ultimately believed that the best way to survive was by transforming human with the power of Abyss, which somehow caused Mary Ann's death. And we all know, the destruction comes from the Primordial Sea. And at the end of 4.2 Archon Quest, Nivellet said, by any chance, Charles awakened this big whale when he fell into the abyss, which is the reason why this whale came to fountains to consume all the primordial sea water and cause the water level rising, which is same as the prophecy. If Sandrone is in fact Elaine and Mary Ann, it won't be weird if they, or he, hated Child for causing all this mess. And lastly, the most obvious clue we got since the beginning, Sandra's other name is Marionette, which is a puppet controlled from above using wires or string. But other than that, in French, Marionette also means Little Mary. Marionette? Marianne? Coincidence? Maybe. Well, everything in this video is just a speculation, so we won't know the truth until we see her in game. But what do you think about it? So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.